Okay, so I woke up to a whole bunch of lies. Uh, from Melly Germany. This is on my aunt's page. This is the one that she's freaking out and demanding money from me. All of this is a lie. Literally. So I'm going to read through it. To anybody new to Mary's story, you should know that Mary lies and her lies are getting worse. This is wrong. I do not lie and my lies are not getting worse. I've literally proven that my aunt is the one who lied when she told people that I withdrew that $50. I proved that. I did not withdraw that $50. That was a lie that my aunt was telling people. Because I proved that lie, that's why they're lying about me extra today. Because I proved that my aunt was the one who was lying about me withdrawing that $50 from the GoFundMe. That's the whole problem. So because I proved that Kathy was lying, now they have to make people believe that I'm a liar. Oh, God. It's documented that Mary has been helped many times in her life by her family and friends. I was helped by my grandmother. My grandmother, and yeah, I have a few friends that help me out, but mostly my grandmother. Kathy has never once helped me in her life. Uh, unfortunately, Mary has never made anything out of the opportunity she was given. Instead, she has simply used up, spoiled, and wasted the many gifts of properties, cars, and money given to her. She was given a Jeep by her grandmother for her 18th birthday. She was also given a trailer for her and her ex-husband to live in. Mary didn't pay the necessary payments for the Jeep or the trailer. This is a lie. All right, I'm going to I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to lie. I'm going to I mean I'm going to I'm going to highlight this lie here. Okay. Um This is not true. I was given a Jeep for my 18th birthday, after I graduated high school, I was given a Jeep. It was a 1998 Grand Duke Cherokee Limited. It had gold rims. And I paid the bills on it. Because I had a job when I graduated high school. I was working at a pizza place, Hungry Howie's. They were paying me under the table. My first job I didn't even um, ever have a government check for because Hungry Howie's was paying me under the table. And I was paid under the table until I started working at Big Daddy's Pizza. I used the 1998 Jeep that I was given for my 18th birthday in 2003. Um, I drove that until 2006 when me and my husband got into an accident because we were fighting and I was driving really fast and we flipped. We went end over end and when we rolled down it we rolled down a hill. And the nineteen ninety eight Jeep Cherokee was totaled out and they gave me the money to get another Jeep, which I got a two thousand and two Jeep Cherokee. And then um I I wound up driving that one uh, that was just after my father passed away that Jeep exploded on me with my little brother and me in the in the vehicle the um the the thing just stopped working and smoke started coming out it overheated and um, I hadn't been properly doing the oil so that one it did blow up because of me um, because I was going through a lot and I didn't was wasn't doing the oil properly I think a lot of girls at 21 years old have probably made that mistake. And it's not a situation of, well, she doesn't pay the bills. She doesn't do this. She doesn't. When I had these vehicles, they were registered. They were insured because I was working at the time and I was driving my husband everywhere. I had to have a vehicle. The years where I was married, I had to have a vehicle. We lived um, the trailer that she gave me, and this is another thing, it wasn't just that she gave me a trailer, she gave me a large piece of land out in the woods at 6690 Cedar Point Road. At the time, it did have a trailer on it, and I did live on it. 
The reason she gave me that was because my grandfather wanted me to have it. It was always mine. After my grandmother passed away, Kathy came and she said, out of the goodness of our hearts, we're going to give you the 6069 property. Um, and I said, well, where is the deed to it? And her exact words were, figure it out. I was never able to figure out where the deed to that property was, and it was taken away from me for taxes. That's what happened to that property. But to say that while my grandmother was alive, she was giving me these things, and I wasn't paying for them, is a lie. For years, while I was married, I had multiple vehicles that I was paying the bills on because I was working, and so was my husband. All of this is a lie that is being put out to slander and defame me, spread by my own family. Moving on. Uh, not paying the maintenance or anything for the reason is Mary became homeless. After the death of her grandmother, Mary was given a $10,000 inheritance money and was allowed to live in the family condo for a year. Pausing again. Okay, so they're saying that I was allowed to live in the condo for a year. Um, Kathy came. She told me I could have that property, figure out where the deed was. She gave me a check for $10,000. She said this was, it was uh, insurance. I shouldn't even have had that, but it was insurance, and I was on the policy, so she had to give me that. Um, and then she said, you have to leave here right now. I'm going to the bank at this very moment to get the eviction notice. You're out of here. You have to leave. You know This is not your place. And then she left. And I thought that the police were coming. And I waited for a year, yeah, because I didn't have any place to go. And I didn't know what to do. And I said that I was going to stay there until the eviction notice came because I was waiting for them to read the will. See, when my grandmother passed away, there was a will that left me everything. Not just the condo, not just the Jeep, not just the money. They, it left me everything. And Kathy got rid of that will at the last moment before my grandmother passed away. That will still exists somewhere. It still exists. And when I go to Florida, I'm going to find a copy of that will and prove that that will still exists. My grandmother wrote a very personal will stating that she did not want me to be left homeless. She wanted me taken care of. She wanted me to have everything that she had so that I would not be homeless. Kathy intentionally did what she did so that I would not receive what my grandmother wanted me to have and now she is lying about me to make people believe that I deserve the life that I have. It was repossessed when Mary located California. A kind church person gave her the use of a car. Again, the a friend of mine gave me a truck. See, it, she says it's a kind church person gave me use of a car. When I was in high school, I was in ROTC. And I made friends, some who went on to be in the Navy. One of my friends, who is now grown up and in the Navy, found out I was homeless and was stationed in California. And he had an extra truck because he had just bought himself another one. He gave me this truck to live in. It was not that I was allowed to use the vehicle. He gave me this truck. It was my truck. He gave it to me for a place to live so that I would not be homeless. How cruel of you to say that it's just some church person giving me a vehicle to use. It was a truck that he gave me to have as a shelter because he was my very good friend. Not some church person. He was my very good friend from high school who was now in the Navy and was trying to help me. Oh, basically lived in the church parking lot until the friend who gave Mary the car demanded it back because Mary had not paid the insurance or kept the car clean and simply had done nothing to find a job or accommodation. I
I have videos on YouTube of me cleaning that truck. I had days where I would get depressed and it would fall dirty the same way that my apartment does now when I get depressed. But to say that I just never did anything to keep, keep it clean is, is disgusting. I did get insurance for it. I got the title for it. I did all of that. And I didn't have the money to keep it up, but I wasn't driving the truck. Why do you need to keep up insurance on a truck that you're not driving? And I could not drive the truck because the truck was a stick shift. And I can't drive a stick shift. <laughs> he tried to teach me, but I'm not someone that can learn these things. I tried. I've had multiple men in my life try to teach me how to drive a stick shift. I was not capable of it. They knew I could not drive the stick shift when they left me the truck. They knew when they left me in that parking lot that I could not drive the stick shift and I had a Section 8 voucher that we were working on getting the apartment for. That was the plan. It was not a situation where they were saying, okay, here, here's your shelter, now get a job. They didn't do that. I told them, I have a Section 8 voucher. I'm working on finding the apartment. They said, you can park here until you find the apartment. And that's what I did. And then I spent months searching for the apartment. Here on my YouTube, there are videos of me going through and doing walkthroughs of multiple apartments that I thought I was going to have that didn't work out because they would find out that I was Section 8 and they would change the price of the apartment to where I couldn't afford it anymore because they found out that being Section 8 is a, it's a guaranteed pay. So I would, I would look at apartments that were like, oh, this one is like 900 a month. And then they would say, well, your Section 8 is 1500 a month. Well, I'm only being paid 1200 So that means that I can't now get this apartment, even though I should have been able to. I went through a lot of that. A lot of that. For them to just say that I never did anything. She's even neglected the Section 8 apartment she's living in now, not paying the rent or utility bills and not cleaning it. This Section 8 apartment, which by all accounts was a wonderful opportunity to establish herself in Los Angeles. Mary is a liar and even admits this in her own book. She presented herself as being a victim when nothing could be further from the truth. I do my best with my apartment. I own very little. I haven't built it into a home because I've been receiving death and rape threats since I moved in and I don't feel comfortable here. I don't feel safe. Every night I receive emails telling me somebody is going to come and rape you tonight. We have your address and we're going to hurt you. <laughs> They say that I don't do anything. I've been, I've been medicated, you know, I've been going to the doctor, I've been trying, right here, y'all hear that, that is my medication that I take every single night. I see my therapist every month when they're telling people that I don't do anything at all. They are lying to make it look like I'm just this horrible person who's not worthy of love. Everything this woman has said in this post is inaccurate. And it hurts me deeply that this is how people see me because it's all lies. <laughs> Every word of it is lies. Say that I've never done anything, never did anything, never will, never could. I had jobs when I was married. I did take care of myself when I was married. <laughs> I did. I take care of my apartment. I'm doing the best I can. I'm quite literally doing the best I can. <laughs> and it's not enough. <laughs> it's 
never going to be enough. <laughs> That's what people don't understand. Like... Don't go in there! No Wi-Fi. Okay, I'll just chill. Never gonna be enough. My name is Adrastia, and I am a targeted individual. They lie about me every day so that other people will hurt me. I grew up in an extremely abusive household. My little brother was born handicapped because the abuse was so bad. My father beat our mother the day he was born. And my little brother never spoke and never walked because of what our father did. They were heavy drug users. Heavy. I have neighbors who remember doing meth with them. My older sister saw them shooting up heroin at least once. My mother was an alcoholic. My father beat her until the day he killed himself in front of his entire family. He beat her every day until the day he put a gun to his head in front of his children. <laughs> Just so Kathy can go on and tell people that there was no abuse and no mental health issues in my family. When I left home and I got married, I didn't think life was going to go the way it did. I didn't know I was marrying a man who didn't really love me. I was doing my best. And constantly being belittled by an abusive family. Just like I am now. I'm bipolar. I have CPTSD. I am trying to medicate myself. I am trying to go to therapy. I am trying to get better. And my family is constantly... Pushing back on it, telling me that I'm worthless, that I'm nothing, that I'm garbage, that nobody loves me, that I don't do anything even when I'm actively trying. I am literally doing my best. And everybody lies about me every day. Everything that woman said about me today was a lie, and other people are going to read that and believe her. <laughs> that I'm just this piece of shit that's never done anything in my life, and everything she said was a lie. Every word. <laughs> she lied about the truck, she lied about my Section 8, she lied. And, like... <laughs> If I wasn't taking care of my Section 8 well enough, why would it have just gotten renewed for a whole nother year? <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got this paper that says, and I'm trying to make sure I cut everything out so that nobody is going to be contacting anybody before I show this. Okay, this is to notify you that on the basis of the recent review, a review of your eligibility and income, the following determination has been made. You remain eligible for the rental assistance program. Can I turn the camera? I don't know. Okay. You remain eligible for the rental assistance program. 
and I just have to be in compliance with one provision of the lease, and that's that I'm, I'm composed of one person. That's all I have to do at this point to continue receiving my Section 8 is just continue being one person in here. It costs thirteen uh, thirteen twenty two a month, and they pay they pay twelve two twenty nine of it, and I'm supposed to pay thirty dollars, and that's that's the that's what we're working with right now, and um. They just renewed me for a whole nother year. This is this will be three years in this Section 8 apartment. And if they truly felt that I was letting it fall into disarray, which for one, you can't let a Section 8 fall into disarray. Because they come every month and they do checks. They do inspection. A stranger comes into my apartment every month and walks around looking at everything I have. And if it's dirty... They write that down, and when the next month when they cover the inspection, they say, we noticed this last time and we need to make sure it's been fixed. They tell me about the problem so that I can fix it. It's not a situation where I'm allowed to live in filth day after day after day. Even if I get depressed and it gets messed up in here, I have to clean it because there's going to be an inspection soon and I have to... And and if I if I fail the inspection, they're not gonna yell at me or kick me out. They'll send people to help me get it back in order. Because they understand that with mental health issues like mine, sometimes we can't do things that everybody else can can normally just do. So when she says that I've let my apartment fall into disarray like this, living in a Section 8, you can't. She's lying about something that you literally can't even do because they do too, they're, they're checking too regularly to keep the place clean. I hate being lied about. It genuinely hurts me. When I see the things that they say about me because they're lies. And if any of them had any compassion or any understanding towards what I've actually gone through. This is why part of my movie is going to be getting myself properly diagnosed. I'm going to be tested for autism. I want to be tested for OCD. I want to be tested. I want to go to do that brain scan where they can see PTSD in the brain. I need to prove that none of this is a choice. <laughs> because if I could prove on a medical level that none of this was a choice, that I actually am dealing with these problems. The people saying that it's all just a choice would be the ones in the wrong. But I don't have those... I don't have those tests yet. Because I've never had the money to be accurately diagnosed. In Florida, they just throw things at you. But I'm going to. Before I make my movie, for the movie, I'm going to have the money to have these tests done to verify once and for all what my actual mental state is. And then people will be able to see me as somebody who is trying and not as just as somebody who is a failure. Because <laughs> I am trying and I have been trying. <laughs> I'm just not like everybody else. I can't do things that everybody else could do. I can't emotionally handle things that everybody else can handle. And that comes from a lifetime of abuse. My aunt's reaction to being shown that she lied about something is the perfect example of my family. The narcissism, the belittling, the demeaning. Oh, because she was proven wrong. She couldn't just be an adult and say, Yeah, I said something that wasn't true. Sorry.
I was upset and trying to make people upset with you. Which is what happened. She made up a lie to make people hurt me because she was having a bad night. And then when I proved that that was a lie, she couldn't be the bigger woman and say, Sorry, you're right. I made a mistake. She had to double down on the fact that it wasn't a lie. She doesn't see it, can't see it, won't look at the evidence no matter how many times it's shown. She would prefer to close her eyes and plug her ears and say, I didn't hear anything. I didn't see anything. And she knows the truth. And one day everybody will know the truth. That's the whole point of the film that I have to make because of my family's denial of the truth. Next year, next year I'll be able to prove everything that I have said. Next year I'll finally be validated and seen as a human being that is trying. <laughs> Next year, I just have to get to February of next year, and I'll be allowed to be a person again. <laughs>